Today's quotation is, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. I'll call her a 16th regular council, regular meeting of the Common Council order. Madam City Clerk, would you please call the roll? Bauman? Here. Berg, Here. Eberg? Here. Serta? Here. Davis? Here. Graf? Here. Kittleson? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Sigali? Here. Stefan? Here. Susha? Here. Van Akron? Here. And Vanderweel? Here. 16 present. Quorum is present. Approval of the minutes. Alderman Graf? Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the minutes of the previous. Alderman Graf, would you please put your mic on? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I would then move that the minutes of the previous Common Council meeting be accepted as entered on the record and the same stand approved. There's a motion second. and a second. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Pledge of Allegiance, I'd ask uh, Alderman Vanderwill <coughs> to lead us. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Vanderweel. <clears throat> Madam City Clerk, public forum. Uh, we have mayor's appointments. I'm sorry. Mayor's appointments. Honorable members of the council, hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. Uh, Blue Harbor Resort Convention Center Committee, Paulette Enders, Director of City Development, Alderman Eldon Berg, Alderperson Vicki Meyer, Rick Peterson, representative from Blue Harbor, Claudia Reinbolt, representative of the lodging establishment, Susan Hundley, representative of the lodging establishment, and Richard Hartman, citizen member at large. Uh, all <coughs> terms expiring 41706, signed by the mayor. And those appointments will lie over. Good. Now we'll move on to public forum. Thank you. Thank you. Um, first on the list for public forum <coughs> is Scott Lewandowski. And Scott, could you give me your home address, please? 2201 Erie Avenue. 2201 Erie. And you will have five minutes, sir. I would like to thank Mayor Perez, <laughs> Sue Richards, and a member of the Common Council for allowing me to speak tonight. I'm here tonight to speak about taking more and more money from the wallets and purses of Sheboygan citizens <coughs> and misleading these citizens. A few weeks ago, this Common Council voted to go forward with the Municipal Court even though it is projected to lose at least $65,000. One of the reasons given for going forward with this court is that the people of Sheboygan could save money on fines. But now committees have already voted to raise the filing fee for the municipal court and are now discussing raising fines. So instead of saving money, the citizens of Sheboygan will be paying more than was first expected when the municipal court was approved. Also being talked about is continuing the wheel tax, even though it is to be phased out in 2007, as voted on by a previous common council. When the municipal court was being voted on, Alderperson Serta said, we can't always vote against something a previous common council approved. This wheel tax is also unfair, as there are many people from Kohler, Sheboygan Falls, Plymouth, and other places that use our roads and don't have to pay the tax. There are many taxpayers in Sheboygan who have had to cut their spending because their wages are not going up due to working less hours or being on a fixed income. They can't go to their boss and say, I need more money and it's given to them. Yet this common council is continually asking their bosses, the taxpayers, for more money instead of living within their means. More and more people of Sheboygan cannot afford this. They are being hit twice by having to pay more in taxes, and then they also have to pay more for gas, heating, fuel, food, etc. Maybe $6 for the wheel tax isn't much, but multiply that towards the number of cars that they may have, 
plus the stormwater fee, plus the tax rate going up, and the total isn't so small anymore. This common council needs to be more fiscally responsible, just like the taxpayers of Sheboygan are being forced to do. The people of Sheboygan are not an unlimited source of money. Finally, Thanksgiving is coming up in a few days. It's a time that we think about what we are thankful for. I may not always agree with what the mayor, common council, and other city officials do, but I am thankful for the many, many hours that each one of you puts into your jobs. Being on four city committees myself and one school committee, I realize how much time it takes. And I want to thank each one of you for the time and effort you put in. And I also want to wish all the citizens of Sheboygan a happy Thanksgiving. That's all I have. Thank you, Scott. Next on the list is Mr. Ernest M. Kepler. Mr. Kepler, could you come up to the mic, please? <clears throat> and I would need your home address. 2533 Lakeshore Drive, Sheboygan. And Good you evening. Have five minutes, sir. Good evening. I'm here once again to protest the high property taxes in Sheboygan. I'm asking that this council please pass a 2006 budget that results in a tax decrease. If not, then the only allowable increase would be a zero increase. I measure property taxes by the actual dollar amount that I spend. This means that if the property values go up, the tax rate should go down accordingly. To decrease property taxes, the council needs, of course, to decrease spending. While there are numerous ways to accomplish this, there is an area that will have an immediate impact on spending, and that is health care coverage regarding all city employees. It is my understanding that some public employees pay nothing and some a very small amount of their health care costs as provided by their employer, the taxpayers. I realize that this is not an easy subject to approach, or will it be popular to those on the receiving end, but it must be addressed. When reviewing the high level of wages and salaries paid to Sheboygan City employees, they certainly can afford to pay an appreciable amount of their health care coverage. I propose that the city employees pay towards their health care costs at least at the same rate as what people working in the private sector or the economy pay. Examples of this are, for a man and a wife, there is typically a $100 a month premium with an additional $500 deductible before any coverage begins and that's per individual, or $1,000 per couple. Then there is a copay of at least 25 to 30 percent. This coverage ends when employment ends, either by termination or by retirement. Uh, this relates to both managerial and labor positions. While managerial employees have been participating in this type of program for more than 25 years, those considered non-managerial or label are also involved and are participating more and more every year. Reference of this has just been in the news the past few weeks with the renegotiation or contract concessions of the UAW and General Motors. For those of us on Medicare, we, all will, be, we will all be paying $88 per person per month beginning in 2006. Added to this is a monthly supplemental insurance of an average of $120 to $130 per person. Some people may pay more. For a man and a wife, this equates to about $5,000 annually. This coverage is only for what Medicare provides. No eye care, no dental, no selected health care needs are covered. This also excludes any prescription drugs. For me, there is no complaint regarding the quality of the public employees. From my viewpoint, they're all doing an adequate job. We, the taxpayers, just no longer can afford to pay for our own health care needs, plus those in the public employment, especially considering the fact that the pay of most, if not all, public jobs is higher than a comparable skill or discipline in the private sector. Please remember that if there is no tax decrease, then please, let's have no tax increase. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kepler. <coughs> That's it. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Clerk. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is a mayor's comments. There's three items I'd like to just briefly touch on and then we'll move on to our budget hearing. The first item is the mayor's live show that debuted last week. It's called 30 Minutes with Your Mayor. And it's a live show uh, televised out of council chamber. 
chambers, and uh, the purpose of the show is to give the public an opportunity to get to know what is going on daily in, at City Hall. I invite aldermen to participate in the show if they so wish. I invite the public to participate in the show if they so wish. The, the format of the first show uh, was simply to have guests. I will probably continue to do that and then open it up to maybe a, a little bit more of a different format. The first guests were uh, Paulette Anders and Mr. Pete Fullerton, and we talked about the deterioration of our housing stock and how we need to take some action in that area and some of the services that are provided by housing inspections uh, department. We didn't have a, a big uh, showing of public listeners. And we hope that gets better. If it doesn't, the show is st still aired live and it's aired periodically uh, before the next show. So there's plenty of opportunity for the public to see that. The next item I'd like to comment on briefly is a budget. As it stands now, the city tax levy, we were by statute allowed no more than 3.3% increase in our levy, which reflects a 4% increase over, last, over the last budget compared to the 6% increase of the 05. So, so the budget is a lot less than, than the previous one. Also, the, the assessed tax rate, uh, the 05 budget was, had an increase of 4.7. This one, as it stands now, has a 1.5% increase in the rate. Now, I know that some of you have talked to me about having a 0% increase in the rate, and that's your, that's your option. What I have done and what Mr. Gebhardt have done is try to put a budget together that reflects your wishes. When you ask for, uh, when you approve a new police station, a new fire station, and other projects, all those come with costs. So that budget that Mr. Gebhardt and I put together reflects that. If there are some adjustments that you'd like to make, you have that option also to make those uh, uh, amendments next Monday when we actually pass the budget. Tonight is not the night to make any motions. There are no documents on your desk to make motions with respect to the budget. It's a, it's a listening session for uh, listening here in front of the public, and that's all we're doing tonight. Each of you will have received this particular form and this is a form that I'd like to ask you to use if you, per, if you have um, in mind of any <coughs> amendments that you'd like to make to the budget. This will make things easier for Mr. Gebhardt, myself, and even uh, our city clerk. It's, it's, a, it's a handy tool that Mr. Gebhardt put together uh, because we anticipate that perhaps some aldermen may want to make some changes to the final budget. And it's going to make things move a little smoother um, and uh, get, get the job done. So again, today is a listening, is a hearing for the, the budget. Next week is the approval of the budget. If there is members of the public that would like to speak, I will ask the alderman to open up the floor so that the public can speak. Because next week is not really a hearing, but it's, it's the pas passage of the budget. But we'll provide that opportunity to the public to speak to the council that day also. But it will require council action to open the floor. Finally, Thanksgiving's coming up. We have a lot to be thankful for. Hasn't been an easy year. Prepare yourself, brace yourself for an even more difficult year next year. Things are not gonna get e easy, but we do have a lot to be thankful for. We move this city forward together. Pros and cons, agreement and disagreement. We've done a good job, and I'm very pleased with the council. I want to wish you, every one of you and the public a happy Thanksgiving. The next item on the agenda will be the budget hearing. Is there anyone that would like to address the council with respect to the budget? We will have a three minute time limit per person and I will ask for your name and address. Sir, please come up. And can Hello. we have your name? Here? My name is David Iden. And how do you spell your last name, David? E-I-D-E-N. E-I-D-E-N. And your home address? 2606 South 9th Street, Sheboygan. South 9th. And you will have three minutes, sir. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Approximately between 10 and 11 years ago, my wife and I 
moved here from Wausau to accept a job in the area. And one of the things that we really enjoyed about the area once we, once we came upon it was the various <coughs> things that you had to offer in this area, the various parks and other attractions. But the one thing that stuck in our mind the most, especially once upon the birth of both of our children as they grew older, was our <coughs> city library. We think of it as a great asset to, to the city, not only to the city, but I think to the county and the surrounding area. And that's, in fact, one of our favorite memories was being able to, in the first two years we moved here, was seeing the, like, the water fountain going, seeing how beautiful the library is, how, how well it was maintained. Unfortunately, within the last three years, something's happened that we're kind of distressed about. The fact that the library seems to be getting substandard funding. Now I realize Everybody knows that budgets are tight, state revenues aren't exactly not going up. But the last year in particular, we are unhappy about because they want to cut the budget an additional 10%, which is like 10% of their operating budget, like $206,000. And that's going to get to the point where even some of the staff is going to have to end up getting laid off, and, or as it is already when we go to the library. I take the kids to the children's library quite a bit. You know, you begin to wonder, how long before the quality materials that my children and my family can get are going to be unavailable? Or the library itself, in many cases, as you well know, was closed on Fridays in many cases until the point where they used their con contingency fund in order to open it up. Now, one thing I thought about is, OK, what can we do to save money for that? Well, two things we could do, and none of them are going to be very, one of them is not going to be very popular at all. And that's similar to what the guy spoke of before. I'm suggesting, too, we have a $7.5 million insurance. You pay $7.5 million a year for insurance funds. Now, one of the things that could save money is, yes, it, same with me, where I work. The moment you retire, you don't get insurance. Think about the money that would, that would be saved and could be, a, could be applied if, you know, and I'm sorry. I'm just really sorry that this has to be. But hey, we're tight. If it's to the point where we have to cut money for assets in our city, hey, somebody's got to bite the bullet, too. Also, another thing which I thought about, too, is this is interesting. I read about this. There was a letter in the editor on Sunday. Alderman Bonnie Sita tried to attach an addendum to RO15-1 to remove $125,000 of taxpayer funding that the Board of Parks and For Forestry had recommended. Now, my question is, OK, was this money that we're borrowing? Because I, I did some research, and I found out we also got a block grant for $400,000. And my question is, why is that $125,000 then? Why couldn't we put that towards something that the city could use? The library, for an example, or something else? So your time is up. OK. Thank you very much for You're coming welcome. in. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Please, ma'am. <clears throat> And can I have your name, please? Um, Darlene Nardi. Darlene. And Darlene, what is your home address? 1747 Camelot Boulevard. 1727? 47. 47, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Camelot. And you will have three minutes. OK. Um, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. As a taxpayer, I say no to any tax increase. I commend you on your reviewing of the Mead Public Library budget and saving us a lot of money. As representatives for the taxpayer, <clears throat> I'm assuming that you will be reviewing the budgets of other departments and city <laughs> services in like manner. This saving us more money. Again, I say no to any tax increase. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Is there someone else that would like to address the council? Please. And could you please state, <clears throat> excuse me, your name and home address, please? Henry Capitello, 1619 North 38th Street. And that's in the town of Sheboygan. But I am here as representative of Home Inc., who is a taxpayer in the city of Sheboygan. And you'll have three minutes, sir. OK. Um, I, again, echo the sentiments of some of the other speakers that I feel that uh, we should not have any tax increase. The reason I say this is if you look at <clears throat> as, as a taxpayer, um, you have to pay taxes every year. 
whether the the city increases their tax <laughs> or the county or the school system it would be nice for one year that we have no tax increase from any of the governmental entities that tax the taxpayer and actually have in fact I, I i would i would propose that you look at maybe giving us a tax cut where you actually reduce the tax levy that that uh, is imposed on the taxpayer and you know you're going to get to the point where you will not be able to get the taxes that you need because the people just aren't going to be able to afford it and one of my suggestions is to, and I know that the, the council has already looked at this and has gone a different direction, but you know, the county hired someone to look at uh, all of their staffing within their, their uh, organization to look at where they could consolidate duties, where they could eliminate positions. Um, I would seriously say that uh, the city needs to do that. And if you look at this and if there's positions that you can consolidate, that you can uh, reduce, by, by all means do that. Um, to, to lessen the tax burden to the taxpayer. Um, one of the other areas that I, I looked at, and I had some information, um, I, I look at uh, some of the overtime that's paid for the police department. And I would be one of the first advocates for the police department. And I would say that under police patrol, um, you're looking at $192,000 of overtime in 2004, 225,000 in 2005. Um, I look at this and I, and, and I say, you, you know what that tells me? It's that th there's not enough police officers. You may want to consider hiring additional police officers and maybe that would bring down the cost of overtime. Um, because if, if you're looking at, at as much overtime as this, you're definitely shorthanded. Uh, a lot of the police officers are having to work additional shifts, and I think that that reflects that they're understaffed. I think that in the long run, you might actually save money there. These are some of the things that, that uh, although you, you may not reduce a lot of money, but you know what? It may be more cost effective to do that, to hire additional police officers. Uh, the other area that uh, I looked at is one of the things when you look at uh, some of the departments that, that don't spend their money you know, in one year and want to carry it over to another year. I bring an example where we have one for equipment. Um, you know, where you're looking at uh, several hundred, uh, Excuse me, almost. Henry. Your time is up. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for coming out. Is there someone else that would like to address the council? Is there anyone else? Please, sir. <clears throat> Could you I give thought us I had five minutes, but I only have three minutes, so I've got to be speak very quickly. <laughs> Could you just Edward state your Kowski, name? Edward uh, Kowski, 2632 North A Street. I've attended most, I've attended most of the Mead Library uh, meetings, so I think that I can speak with some authority on the Mead li Library budget. First of all, the budget was proposed by the Mead Library Finance Committee, and the Mead Library uh, director said that Rich Gephardt told her to add 3% to the library budget, which she did. When I asked at the same meeting, since you already have $53,000 in the 205 budget, which was to be spent for 3% raises, and another 53,000 in the 206 budget, plus you're asking the city for an $84,000 increase uh, in, fine, in funding plus $33,000 increase from the county, which adds up to about $223,000 additional. Do you need that money to run the library and keep the services as they are today? And the answer was yes. We are no longer allowed to ask questions at the meetings because they because of questions like that that we asked, they no longer allow anybody in the audience to ask any questions. There's been some discussion regarding the library staff salaries. And that is totally up to the library board trustees. You have nothing to do with that, and you can't really affect that. However, you do not have to fund at that level that allows excessive salaries to be paid at the library. 
The library director, uh, excuse me, the board of trustees compares the library director to the police of chief, to the, the police chief, okay, who has a $10 million budget, 130 employees, where the library has a $3.5 million budget and 49 employees. And by the way, chief, she makes more money than you do. Okay. <laughs> So let's compare the library to another department that makes three that has a budget of 3.5 million. They have 53 employees. The library has 49. They serve the city and the public more hours than the library actually has in in their service uh, delivery. If you were to bring that department, that city department, up to the same salary level of their top management as the library, you would have to increase, increase the director's salary by $26,000 per year, the assistant director's salary by $26,000. <laughs> You'd have to create a maintenance director for $48,000 and a new PR position for $51,000. If I asked you to finance that department for $151,000 more plus benefits, which would bring it over to over $200,000, I think you would say that's crazy because we're not going to have any increase in service to the public. Well, then why in heaven's name would you finance the library in the same way? Mr. Rakowski, your time is up. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Paul McGraw. I would move that the hearings be closed. There's a motion and a second to close the hearing. Is there any discussion on that? There being none, all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Consent agenda, Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. But before we start the consent agenda at this time, I'd like to pull forward doc document 1557 which is a resolution creating, uh, d creating, describing, and making certain findings and approving project plan for tax income in district number 13, the city of Sheboygan. And I'd move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second to put resolution 1557 upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, would, could Paulette Enders please explain a bit of this to us? So we understand. Ms. Anders, would you please step forward? Thank you, Mayor and Common Council. Um, I think many of you know um, about this project. We've talked about it over the past several months. This is the landmark project, and it's between 7th and 6th, just north of the Wells Fargo property, and it will be a part of the Sheboygan Retirement Home. And it's our 13th TIF district. And this one's a little bit different in that it's a pay-as-you-go, so that the debt isn't initially kind of undertaken by the city. It's undertaken by the developer. And the payments are paid back to the developer through the increment that's generated. And it was approved by the Finance Commission. It's gone through Plan Commission and also through the, um, the TIF board, the Joint Review Board. And we do have the developers here tonight if you have any questions for them. Alderman, any questions? OK. Thank you. Oh, Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't have a question for the developers. Um, I guess I have a question more so for uh, the city attorney. Um, there are some aspects of this project that I, I really like. I like the fact that it's a shortened time frame and that we're just isolating it to one project. And the reason that I'm going to support this is I've been uh, under the impression that the previous proposal to put this type of long-term care facility up um, in the past was going to be a nonprofit and we would not get any money back on the tax rolls. And I'm just wondering when we go into the final contract, if you will be putting any type of clause in there, you know, I'd hate to set up this TIF district for 10 years, and in the 11th year, they turn into a nonprofit organization, and the city never realizes the benefit from the addition to the tax base. Is there any way that we can put into the final document that they cannot become a nonprofit uh, entity in the next 25 years? Attorney McLean. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Alderman Susho, we don't have exactly that language in the proposed development agreement, but we have something similar uh, in several 
several places. Uh, it's an obligation of the developer to, uh, uh, number one, they acknowledge and represent that the, their <coughs> project will be taxable. Number two, we have a provision in there that uh, in any uh, condominium declaration that is created, that it be placed as a declaration in the condominium documents that uh, <coughs> the property would remain taxable. Uh, third, there's a provision that in the event, uh, unlikely event that the property ever would not be taxable, that they would agree and their heirs and assigns and successors would agree that they would pay payments in lieu of taxes uh, equivalent to what the taxes would be, not only to the city of Sheboygan, but to the other taxing entities, the county, school district, and LTC. Uh, we had one meeting with the developers um, to discuss the development agreement uh, last Wednesday, I believe. And uh, the, uh, the developers had had an opportunity to review the development agreement. They had some issues in the agreement, but not with respect to taxability. So they're in agreement that, uh, and recognize that the property will be taxable. Um, it's intended to be taxable. And uh, there's also, it comes to mind again, provisions in there that they will take no, uh, no steps, either actively or passively, to propose or to support uh, tax exemption for the, for the property. So I think we've got it covered as well as we can in an agreement. Um, uh, I appreciate your concern on that. Uh, there was comment to that effect also at the, uh, at the public hearing before the Planning Commission. So uh, we were pretty careful on putting language to that effect in. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Okay. We will take a roll call on that. I'm sorry. All in the setup? Oh, never mind. That's fine. Call the roll. Okay. Um, D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. And Bellman, 16 ayes. Motion carries. Now we will move on to consent agenda. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. For items 16.1 through 16.35, I would move that our, all ROs be accepted and placed on file, all RCs be accepted and adopted. We pass the resolutions and the general ordinances. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. Under discussion, Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would like to ask that document number 1622 please be referred back to public protection and safety. 1622. Do we need a motion for that? Just refer it. Yeah. It'll be referred back. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. So, excuse, will... me. Oh, excuse me, Alderman. Just everyone, please note, in case you didn't catch it, 622 will be for back to public protection and safety. Alderman Serta, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm asking that 1620 would be referred to salary and grievance. 20. 1620. 1620 will be referred to salary and grievance. Thank you, Alderman Serta. Any other? Alderman Stefan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I just have some questions on 1632. I wondered if uh, Tom Holt could just give us an overview of that, please. 1632. 1632, okay. Mr. Tom Holton, would you please step up, sir? This is the uh, development agreement uh, with Walmart concerning road improvements. Mr. Holton. When we started this project with Walmart, uh, the DOT wanted us to look at roundabouts on, on Washington Avenue. That's their initiative before traffic signals want to put roundabouts where they can. And they came back, they, were pulled, they wanted five roundabouts down there at County A, at both ramps on the interstate, at Taylor Drive and at Greenwing Drive. So that led to numerous meetings and discussion to get rid of those roundabouts out there, fearing what would happen to the traffic. Someone come into town, they wouldn't come back once they got out, if they did get out of there. But, <laughs> uh, they came back then that they would get rid of the roundabouts at A, at both ramps on Interstate and at Washington Avenue and Taylor, but they wanted the one at Greenwing. 
So we said we'd take a look at that. So we met with property owners and had some further discussion and uh, there was right away issues. Some of the property owners did not want it there. It impacted their property severely, parking. Uh, so then we went back to DOT and said we didn't want that last roundabout. So they met, came back and said, okay, you got to put in the year 2015 improvements. So it's, the improvements for 2015 are for developments that would take place between now and 2015. We got vacant, 75 acres south of where Walmart's going. Uh, we have acuity could be further expanding. We have property to the west we could be expanding. So uh, this one through capital improvements, that's traditional turn lanes and if different directions and signals, I'm uh, not signals, the moving signals uh, for roughly, I think about $800,000. Any other questions? Alderman Stefan? I guess uh, I understood the, all of it. I just wondered where's the money coming from? And I know when we passed this, it was with the explicit understanding that Walmart was paying for all the infrastructure improvements and if I, you know, from what I've been hearing, they're not paying for this, and I'd just like to understand why. They're not paying for this because this is for future development. There are problems down there now. Walmart's paying for the problems down there now, and what uh, the additional traffic <laughs> development will take place, what that'll do to that area down there. So these improvements are, if we build get everything built today, there's going to be uh, additional traffic generated from the vacant land of that development, and that's what these improvements uh, would to handle. And it's from the TIF 8, uh, which expires, I think, next year. A few more years on that. Okay, any other questions? Okay, thank you, Mr. Holden. Okay, moving uh, 16 1 to 1635 with the exceptions again of 1620 and 16. What was the other one? 22. 1622, which will be referred further to committee. Please call the roll. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. And Deberg. Thank you. Motion carries. Report of officers 2, 1636, lies over to November 28th. 1637, lies over to December 19th. 1638, lies over to November 28th. 1639 to 1650, to be referred. Resolution, Alderman Manny, with those. Thank you, uh, uh, I would like to pull document 1647. 1647. And ask that the rules be suspended to deal with one issue on that document. We, you need to make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. A second. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, and your motion, Wes? Thank you. Um, on the document, we have uh, the transfer of tavern license. That's what we'd like to deal with tonight. The issue is that uh, Diamond Dave's Taco Company in the mall has moved. They were unaware that they need a license change with that address change. They have had a temporary license to be open this weekend. And unless we go ahead and grant the new license immediately, they will be shut down until uh, the next legal time where they could be open. They're uh, a productive business, a good citizen. <coughs> They've had a great record. And I uh, move to approve the transfer of license. There's a motion and a second to approve the transfer of license regarding 1647. Please call the roll. I'm sorry, under discussion, Mr. Alderman Stefan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I guess I'm just confused. I don't have a problem with it, but I'm looking at 1647, and all I see is beverage operators license and taxi cab licenses. I can answer that. Alderman Stefan, when we do the ROs that you pick up on early in the week, this is not updated until Monday, but the committee just got an updated version which has this on. That's why you don't see it on there. Okay. The new one will be with this transfer on. It's just that we didn't have it when you guys got yours. <coughs> we okay, Oliver Stefan? Sure. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. And this is just to pass the transfer. The rest will be still referred to law and licensing. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sigali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Aye. and D. Berg. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 
Resolutions introduced three, 1651 by Alderman Groff, accepting proposal number 20355 of Triad Engineering Incorporation for EP, EPA Brownfields Revolving Loan Fund Grant Application Assistance. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd move that that resolution be put upon its passage. We need, we need a suspension. We need a um, suspension first. I'm sorry, um, I'd ask for a suspension. Thank you. Second, all those in favor said aye. 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 Any opposed? Please proceed. Then I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Is there a second? second. There's a motion and a second. Put resolution 1651 upon mm -hmm. its passage. Any discussion? There being on, please call the roll. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? And Eberg, Aye. 16 eyes. Motion carries. 1652 lies over. 1653 to 1660 to be referred. Alderman Deberg. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, document 1656, if you don't mind, I would like to pull forward and uh, have a roll call vote on that, please. I'm s sorry, you're. you're it's being referred. Are you, are you making a motion for something? Yes, I'm making a motion to to, to what? To bring 1656. No. To what? Do, what would to, you like to do with that? Take a vote on it. But to do what? To do what with it? To, to pass it, file it. File. Oh. I would like to have this. Yeah, to okay. file. Okay. So okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Caught me off guard. I didn't know what you wanted to do. Yeah. I didn't we, know at first because either. it's being referred. <laughs> because it's being referred. And you want to pull it out to take action. We need to know what the action yeah, yeah. is in the form of a motion. So you're, yes. at, you're making a motion to file. To file this. Is there a second? second. There's a, a second to the motion to file. <laughs> under discussion. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, under discussion, I'd like to say that uh, the city of Sheboygan, everybody knows we're struggling for some financial backing and things like this. And when we have a lot of good people in the city of Sheboygan, that are willing to step forward with their money to help the city out no matter which way they can do it. And if they want to donate their uh, finances to the city and stay anonymous, we should not be bickering and telling them to come forward and make themselves known. I think if they, we should not be picking and choosing when we're uh, struggling for finances. So I would, I would Hope that the rest of you support me in filing this document. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Alderman Radke. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to have this referred to public protection safety, if we could, please, so we can discuss this in the committee. OK, yeah. there needs to be a motion and a second. There's a second. I'm sorry, who seconded that? Alderman Berg, just so you know, there's a motion There's a motion to refer. So pardon me, Alderman Graff. I thought filing took precedence over referral to a committee. I was told that referral. <coughs> Referring to a standing, I believe, takes precedence over yep. filing. Okay, everybody clear on that? There was a motion made to file in the second. Under discussion, subsequent motion made to refer to a standing committee which takes precedence, meaning we need to vote on the motion to refer back to which committee, Alderman? Public Protection and Safety. On the motion to refer 1656 by Alderman Radke prohibiting the city from accept accepting anonymous donations for any type of weapons. Motion on the floor. Please call the roll. Um, Davis. No. Graf. No. Kittleson. No. Manny. No. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. No. Stefan. No. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. No. Vanderweel. No. Bauman. No. Deberg. No. Eberg. No. Serta. Uh, four no's and, I'm sorry, four yeses and 12 no's. Motion fails. The motion on the floor is to file. 
Please call the roll. Excuse me. Alderman Susha. I'd like to implement a three man hold, please. Is there three aldermen? Hold on. I challenge the ruling of the chair. Under what grounds, Alderman Berg? Uh, challenge to the ruling of the chair, you ruled a three man hold. Uh, this is a three man hold. It is a ruling of the chair. The ruling of the chair is non debatable. Uh, finding that you don't prevail with the rule of the chair means the three man hold is invalid. Attorney McLean. <laughs> <laughs> do, you have, do you have some authority behind your comments, sir, or are you just. I didn't follow your. Uh, I don't follow it either. Please explain. Yeah. Okay, if I could. You're on. The, I say the motion to refer to public protection safety failed, so it's, it's back on the floor. Now, there is a request for a three-person, three-man hold, and your objection to that? If the chair rules for a three-man hold, that's a decision of the chair. The decision of the chair is a challengeable event. Right. Uh, the challenge, it's a challengeable event that I believe is non-debatable. And therefore, if the ruling of the chair is overturned, so is the three-man hold. That's correct. I, I don't know if the mayor has called the three-man hold. Okay. I'm going to call it just so we can. I'm going to call it just so we can call a vote on the challenge. The challenge will require a majority vote to overrule. Is that a majority or three-quarter? Mm -hmm. A majority, I believe. Okay, the call of the chair has been challenged. It will require a majority vote to over, overturn that. Should that happen, we'll go back to the filing. Everybody got that? No. Please call the rule. Okay, you want to re yes. repeat that because it looks like. Okay, okay hold, on, hold on. Hold on. Go ahead. We're going to take a, a vote on the challenge. Okay, so, so on and the challenge. I will overturn my call. And your call is? Recognize the chair three men hole. Is everybody clear? Mm -hmm. Graf. <laughs> <laughs> Graf. No. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. No. Meyer. I'm not clear. <laughs> if you would know the three man hole holes. If, if, if any alderman vote no, the three-man hole will stay in place. If you vote yes, then that's defeated, and we go back to filing the document. Mm -hmm. Now, Alderman Kittleson, do you want to change your vote? I think please, you would. Please, please, clarify one more time. And if, I, oh, if you vote no, the three-man hold holds. If you vote yes, it goes back to, it'll be, it'll be on the floor again as a motion. And under discussion, I may ask Alderman, you're, you're free to, to do this. Doesn't hurt one single bit to send it to committee. We get used to filing things on the floor without giving mm -hmm. aldermen, committees, the opportunity to do their job. This is why we have standing committees. You're free to do that. All I ask is that you have a little bit more deference for the work of the standing committees in place. Please continue. Okay, Graf, you want no? Kittleson? Yeah, aye. Aye. And Manny? No. Okay. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Radke? No. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? No. Susha? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Nine eyes, seven no's. Okay, motion passes. A challenge sustained. Go back to filing. There's a motion on the floor to file a document uh, 1666. Please call the roll. 
1656. 1656, and this is a motion to file. So <coughs> an I vote would be to file. Everybody clear? Excuse me. Yes. Alderman Susha. Is it under discussion? <coughs> yes. One more time. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I would just ask that you not file this document and come to public protection and safety and find out the reason. This really doesn't have anything to do with weapons. It has more to do with people giving anonymous gifts to the city and what they want in return. So I would suggest that you all not file this and allow due process and come to the committee to listen to the discussion. Thank you. Any further discussion? Alderman Stefan. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, uh, just a point of order, if there's something to be discussed, certainly that could be brought up now and we could discuss it now and it could, you know, it's nothing that prohibits us from discussing this right now. It's on the floor, the motion is to file. So if there's something to be said, say it. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I guess I would feel the same way. I'm not understanding what's going on here, and, and if there's something to discuss, let's get it out and discuss it. And then we can make an, a decision uh, a little easier here. Just for everybody's information, standing committees have a job to do. And a lot of times when documents are referred, they're referred so that aldermen have an opportunity to gather their data and their information to present. And so that people can attend that, that meeting so that they can voice their opinions to when you file on the council floor, you are denying the public and denying the aldermen to have that right. That's what this means. You're free to do as you please. Who else? Call the roll. This is to file, and I vote would be to file the document. Um, <clears throat> Kittleson. Aye. Manny. No. Meyer. No. Montemayor. No. Radke. No. Sagali. Aye. Stefan. Susha? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Groff? Aye. Eleven ayes, five noes. Motion carries. Report Committee 6, 1661. Alderman, who's, who's handling this one? Risk management. Oh. Alderman McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the RC be accepted and adopted. There's a motion. In this. Is there a second? second? There's a motion second to adopt. Under discussion, <coughs> Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, I would like to open the floor to Mrs. Uh, uh, she's here tonight, and uh, she would like to speak on this. Is there a time uh, limit or anything, sir? I think she only wants a few minutes. OK, sir. There's a motion to open up the floor. There's a second. Any discussion on that? Not all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? The floor is open to Betty Ann. Madam, please step up. Betty, could you just give me your home address, please? 610 Huron Avenue. 610 Huron? Mm -hmm. You can go ahead. I just wanted to address the council, and I, th I thank you for your time. Um, I know this has already been reviewed in a closed um, risk committee hearing, and um, from the comments that I had read in the paper, which kind of sprung on me, but um, I'm not arguing, uh, Alderman Myers had said that this was uh, an honest mistake that was done. And to be, to be honest about it, I agree with you that it was an honest mistake. Um, when I first moved to this uh, city, I had honestly made a mistake once too. I, had, um, I ran a stop sign because it was covered up by a tractor trailer. Now that officer gave me a ticket. He also gave the uh, driver of that tractor trailer a ticket because you couldn't see the stop sign unless you were on the sidewalk. When I contested it in court, the judge told me, this was an honest mistake. You weren't trying to break the law, but nonetheless, you did. And you need to be held accountable for it, but I'm going to reduce your fine because it wasn't your fault. So the argument here isn't whether the city did it or not. They did do it. The argument here is, are they responsible? And if so, at what point are they responsible? Now, these items, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, I had unloaded my minivan to take stuff to the dump on Wednesday, which is my trash day and my day off. Um, I have a double side garage. My trash is always between the two houses on the east side of the garage. And I put all my stuff on the west side of the two car garage where there's never any garbage. And I packed it up against the side of the garage. 
And in that was a trunk organizer, two children's car seats, and then my van seats, those big, huge van seats that go in cars. The um, city employees had to reach over my van seats in order to pull this stuff out and get rid of it. And I, call, I actually saw the men come down the driveway because I was ready to load things back in. So it was just a matter of minutes that this had happened and I had called the, um, the sanitation department and his suggestion to him was for me to file a claim. He was really apologetic about it. Um, I just wanted to present my side of the case. I know um, either way I win and, and what I mean by that is either I'm going to get reimbursed at some level or I'm not going to have to pay this in my taxes. <laughs> so um, I will just honor what goes, goes on here but I did want you to hear um, my side of what was going on before you guys took a vote on this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Any further discussion on 1661? There being none, please call the roll. Manny? Uh, please Motion um, to accept and adopt. accept adopt the report of committee, which is to deny the claim and direct the city attorney to send a notice of disallowance. Yeah. No. No? Mm. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? No. Stefan? Aye. Susha? No. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? No. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? No. Eberg? Serta? No. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. And Kittleson? No. Eight to eight. Eight to eight. It's a tie vote. The mayor <laughs> would have to cast the deciding vote. <laughs> <laughs> I will respect the decision of the committee. I will vote to file. To accept and adopt, okay. To accept and adopt. Okay, thank you. Motion carries. 1662, we finance Alderman Groff. Your Honor, I would move that that RC also be accepted and placed on file and the amended pro proposal be approved. There's a motion, is there a second? Second. There's a second under discussion? There being none, all those in favor, state aye. aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> Motion carries. 1663 by Special Committee on Risk Management filing documents submitted a communication from Sheila and Carla Madeline, guardians of the estate of Dina Madeline, respectfully requesting an extension of the date by when they must pay off the remaining $475,000 and approving extending the payoff date until January 16th, 06. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move the RC be accepted and adopted. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second to accept and adopt 1663 under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? and Manny. 15 ayes, one no. Motion carries. 1664 and 65 to be referred. Report of Committee 8, 1666 to be referred. Report of Committee 9, 1667 by law and licensing recommend and amend in several sections of the Municipal Code relating to start up of the Municipal Court. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> we have law and licensing. I have for General Ordinance 520506, I put upon its passage. There's a motion to accept and adopt, adopt and put the ordinance upon its passage. Under discussion. <coughs> Alderman Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, could you let us know, or somebody let us know, where this stands right now? Have we um, been able to secure a judge, or isn't that? Um, as far yet, or um, where do we stand with the development of the municipal court? The development of the municipal court, we have stopped the application consideration for both positions, the clerk and the judge, 
There, they have been, re, I, I believe the municipal judge position has been reviewed by civil service. I, we did not have a good response on the judge. We had a lot better response on the clerk. With respect to Kohler, we have a verbal that they are willing to become a partner in the municipal court uh, structure. We do not have any written formal uh, approval of that of that agreement yet. Anything else you'd like to add, Mr. McLean? Uh, just that I, I did have a discussion this morning with the Village of Kohler's attorney, and they are interested in proceeding rapidly. They, they intend to uh, introduce a, uh, a document that mirrors our municipal court ordinance for the purpose of uh, joining with us as a joint municipal court. They're, they're hoping to do that. The Village of Kohler just meets monthly, and they're hoping to do that at their December 19th meeting. Um, the advantage that would provide is that it would expand the jurisdiction from which a judge could come. Uh, uh, to be honest, as the mayor says, the response so far to the municipal uh, court judge position has been pretty sparse. Uh, we've got an inquiry from the village of Kohler, from uh, residents there. If, uh, if we participate in <coughs> cost share with the village of Kohler, then uh, the judge could come from e either jurisdiction. Uh, and it, in, well, I've got the floor. If I could, Alderman Manny, I apologize for not talking with you uh, about this before the meeting. I, I did mention it at the staff meeting this morning. Uh, language that I had proposed to be inserted in one portion of this ordinance, I, I think will have to be deleted. And that's on the. Uh, The last uh, section of the ordinance, it, it amends section 2-408 sub D on the election term. The last sentence I had proposed to the committee to add uh, that the temporary appointee, if not then a resident, shall establish residence in the municipality within six months of appointment. That, that was to address the problem we've had on finding someone within the city. However, uh, this morning I, uh, in double checking, the state constitution requires that a judge be a qualified elector from the jurisdiction in which the, uh, uh, that they're covering. And as it stands right now, it's just a city court. So we could not provide for, uh, even on a, an appointed basis, uh, for the judge to be uh, a non-resident. Uh, so I would request that that be uh, removed from this document before you pass it. Uh, again, if the timing works out right and we are able to uh, join forces with Kohler, that would expand the boundaries and really address the same issue. Well, Attorney McLean, would you articulate what the motion should read? Uh, it would be to delete the, the last sentence from uh, the proposed section 2 dash 408D that reads that the temporary appointee, if not then a resident, shall establish residence in the municipality within six months of appointment. Right. Yes. Um, rather than doing that, uh, wouldn't it be cleaner to set it back to law and licensing and let a clean document come back to council? Because we have three meetings left this, two meetings left this year. That would be possible, Alderman Graf, and that's up to you. The only concern I would have is Kohler is looking to adopt their ordinance that would mirror ours um, by December 19th, and I, I'd hate to hold them up as to what ours actually says. There's a couple of other provisions that are changing here. The, uh, the election, first election of the judge uh, would be changing from uh, the o from the spring 06 election to the spring 07 election and uh, the startup of the court is provided for January 1, 2006 as opposed to what we currently have is June 2005. So. Well, I would move that we refer this to law and licensing. There's a motion 
to refer 1667 to law and licensing, back to law and licensing committee. Is there a second? Motion, motion fails for lack of a second. We will proceed. Alderman Ma uh, Manny, would you like to incorporate that amendment that was articulated by Attorney McLean to your motion, sir? That's uh, the motion to delete the last sentence in section 2-408-D. Okay, and is there a second to that amendment? Second. Un discussion on the amendment. Alderman, I'm sorry. Madam City Clerk, you wanted to say something on this? We can go ahead, but before we finish, I do need to say okay. something. Okay. Alderman Manny, on the amendment, anything? Perhaps just reflecting what many of us feel, uh, especially hearing uh, Attorney McLean's comments. <clears throat> it's appropriate that we go ahead and pass this tonight so that Kohler can work well with us and uh, have the, the two uh, legal uh, documents uh, be reflective of each other. Thank you, sir. On the amendment, please call the roll. Did we get a second on the amendment? Yes. Thank you. <coughs> Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bowman. Aye. Deberg. Aye. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. No. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. And Meyer. Aye. Fifteen Aye. ayes and one no on the amendment. I will, will uh, Take a vote on 1667 as amended, but I believe you need right. to say something. Right, and just so that you're clear, this is a substitute ordinance, Alderman Graf. It's not the original, it's a substitute. And also, I would ask that the Law and Licensing Committee stop up here after the meeting because none of you signed it, so I need to have you all sign it. That's it. Okay. And this is on the motion as amended. As uh, I'm sorry, the ordinance as amended. Radke? Aye. Substitute ordinance as amended. Aye. Thank you. Sigali? Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? No. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. 15 ayes and one no. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10, 668, 669 lies over. 1670 to 1673 to be referred. 1557 has already been pulled forward. 1558, resolution number 166506 by Alderman Montemayor, approving amendment number one to the tax incremental district number 11, city of Sheboygan. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second under discussion. There being on, please call the roll. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Radke? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 1559, resolution number 167506 by Alderman Graf, Stefan, Montemayor, Susha, and Davis, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 05 budget. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the resolution that you just read, as well as 1560, which is a resolution to authorize a transfer of appropriations in the 2005 document, our budget, I would move that both resolutions be put upon their passage. There's a motion and a second to put both 1559 and 1560 under discussion. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, simply a, a question. Um, I'm perfectly fine with all of this, but a question. On agenda item 1560, um, police department contributions to DARE expenses. Am I right or wrong? I thought DARE is no longer with us. I mean, there's still drug pro um, information, but I thought the DARE program was not here, or is it here? Thank you. Chief Kirk is not here, so I can't answer that. All right. Alman Sagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm looking at 1559, and correct me if I'm wrong, when Mr. Henry Capitola was speaking, he stated that he was a taxpayer of Sheboygan. Okay, now, on here, when it comes to these bid grants, etc., Home Inc. 
is receiving $36,850, and that is for nonprofit organizations, am I correct? That's a so nonprofit. he's he's one and the same, he's a taxpayer, and he's he's got a nonprofit? I believe what they're paying is a payment in lieu of taxes. Some nonprofits pay that if, if I'm... Mm. He's a hotel? He, he lives in the town of Sheboygan and has a business in the city. Is okay. that what your question was? Yeah. When he came up to the mic, he... Right. And he said he's a taxpayer, and yet Home Inc. is in the, the city of Sheboygan. It's, uh, it's connected with Superior Manor. And, and, what, what, and document, what document are you referring to? 1559. And has all the listing of the 2005 oh, block, yeah. community block grant appropriations, like the Salvation Army and Safe Harbor. Second. And on the back, it's Home Inc. Incorporated and has... $36,850 that they're going to be receiving. Mm -hmm. So when he, I thought that was for nonprofit organizations, these block grants, like um, Boys and Girls Clubs and Family uh, Literacy Council, etc. It is a nonprofit. Home, okay, Inc. Well, I th Home Inc. is a nonprofit, yes. My understanding. Let's see if we can have Paulette clear that. I got okay. lights all over the place. Thank you. Zanders. Thank you again, Mayor and Common Council. And I'm not a, I don't profess to be a tax expert, but many times our tax, tax exempt entities that also end up paying a tax. Let's say, for instance, Aurora. It really depends on the function or you know what they're doing at the time, whether it's taxable or not. And as far as Home Inc. Um, we did, um, we had a question from one of the older persons about whether or not they were tax exempt. We did send a question into our HUD representative about that. I don't think that we've heard back. But um, I also went online and I checked, and as of September 30th, it looked as if in the state of Wisconsin they were a not for profit. Um, and like I said, that's, you know, the tax laws are complicated, but um, I think at this time they're eligible. And we'll make sure that you know we re research it further and just double check with our HUD representative. Stay there, Ms. Zender. Does any Alam Susha? Do you have a question for Ms. Zender? Um, no, actually, I think I have an answer to Alderperson Sigali's okay, thank you. question. Okay, thank you. Yes. Um, what Home Inc. does is they provide um, very affordable housing to individuals that are extremely low on the income level, and. Um, that entire building is not completely refurbished yet to accommodate all of this uh, very low income housing. So the part of the building that is not um, completely refurbished to provide this low income housing is taxed. So even though they're working very hard to bring like the fourth floor um, up uh, into more housing units for these people that really need it, they are taxed on it while they're working on um, working on these rooms, which personally I don't think is right, but that's how it is. So when he said that he was a taxpayer, um, that's the portion of the building that he is being taxed on. And the other reason I have my light on is um, Alderperson Montemayor is correct. There is no DARE uh, program in the schools right now through the Sheboygan Police Department. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Vanderbilt. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to uh, state that I've heard Mr. Henry Capitello state many times that he represents a nonprofit agency in the city of Sheboygan that believes in paying taxes. So they are a nonprofit, but they pay taxes. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I also have heard Mr. Capitu repeatedly say, and if I remember the numbers, it's something like $17,000 a year. Thank you. Thank you. Any more? Chief Zier, yes, please. I'm, I'm sorry, you need to come to the podium, sir. Thank you. Chief Kirk is not here, Mr. Mayor, but if I'm not mistaken in the finance meeting, the police department talked about the DARE program, and because it's still listed, it's because there was donated monies from individuals to the DARE program, so that's why they keep the name alive. That's what I okay. remember discussed at DARE. Thanks. Thank you, Chief. Okay, we will call the roll 1559, 1560. Stefan. Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rapke? Aye. And Sigali? Aye. 
16 ayes. Motion carries. 1589, General Ordinance Number 510506 by Alderman Groff, Berg, Van Akron, Berg, and Sadler, establishing the salary for the promoted fire chief. Alderman Eberg. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the um, ordinance be put, put on its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second to put 58, 1589 upon its passage under discussion. Under discussion, um, Your Honor, the, uh, uh, this came through salary agreements and is a combination of looking at uh, dealing with compression issues for the uh, new fire chief and also then uh, raises to over a period of time uh, bring him up to a certain uh, level. Thank you. Any further discussion? Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a, a question and then a comment. It appears to me that this is uh, these raises are in compliance with uh, the general ordinance, and that's why we have to accept them. That's my understanding. Yes. Well, I just would like to bring everybody up to speed what we're talking about here. Um, you're talking about an individual currently making about $76,000 a year. Um, <coughs> January 1st, we're going to give them a raise to uh, approximately 84000 493 plus other increases to non-represented uh, employees. And then in 2007, uh, there would be another increase up to $87,000. And then on January 1st, 2008, um, pay goes up to 90,000 plus. So what we're doing here is because uh, today the general ordinance stands that we have to give this type of an increase. We're increasing somebody's salary in a three-year period from $76,000 up to $90,000. This is where we have a problem with the budget. And um, you can count on a future meeting where I will be coming in with a resolution to change this ordinance so we don't have to continue to give these um, rather large increases. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Alderman Meyer. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I agree with Alderman Shusha. We are in some very tight financial restraints right now. Our city is over 68 million in debt, and we have got to put a stop to this. Um, these raises cannot continue, and I do agree with Alderman Shusha. We need to look at this. Thank you. Any more? Okay, please call the roll. Susha. No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Ballman, D. Berg, E. Berg, Serta, Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, no. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sigali, Aye. and Stefan. Thirteen ayes and three noes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law 1674 and ordinance by Alderman Susha, Vanderweel, Radke, Meyer, and Montemayor amended portions of the municipal code related to the establishment of new fees for licenses and permits issued by the Building Inspection Department. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. There's a motion and a second to suspend. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Please proceed. Okay. Um, what we are doing is um, passing the changes in uh, some of the. We need a motion to pass. Uh, put the ordinance upon his passage now. No. Is there a motion? I'm sorry, yes. Okay. Motion to put upon its passage. Is there a second? Sorry. Under discussion, thank you. Sorry. Um, what we're doing is we're amending some of the fees and uh, the reason we need to suspend the rules tonight is that all of the contractor licenses have to be renewed by the end of this year and in order to um, notify everybody in a timely fashion, we need to pass this tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. And Susha? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 1675 and RO by the Board of Contractors Examiner submitting an application for, all, for building contractors license. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the RO be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion a second to accept the RO under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1676 to be referred to Finance and Library Board. 
1677, an RO by the city clerk submitted an application for a private well permit for Susan Hansman, Alderman Bauman. No, thank you, Your Honor. After reading it, I move that the RO be approved upon its passage. It's motion to, to accept and follow the RO. And a second under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Other matters? Attorney McLean. 1678, an ordinance creating Article 8 of Chapter 110 of the Hawaii Municipal Code of Title Street Festivals so as to regulate street festivals in the city. That lies over. 1679 is an ordinance repealing and recreating Chapter 110, Article 6 of the Municipal Code entitled Block Parties so as to limit the regulations of the ordinance to block parties in residential areas. That lies over. 1680 is a news release from Gene Journal of Skipper Marine regarding the fact that Skipper Bud ranked number two on the list of top 100 dealers that excel in selling and servicing boats from the boating industry magazine. And that will go to Marina and Harbor Commission. Alderman Manette. Alderman Van Akron, sir, you asked for some time. Thank you, Your Honor. I have had the honor the last 19 years to represent the people of the 62nd District. Tonight I am announcing that I will not be running for re-election. I am announcing my attention this early so that anyone interested in running will have plenty of time to do so. I have enjoyed my 19 years of service and encourage anyone that may be interested in running for 2nd District Alderman that now is the time to get involved. Anyone interested should contact the city clerk's office and how many papers can be taken out starting December 3rd. Thank you. Move up. Motion to second to adjourn. We stand adjourned. Law and licensing, could you come up here?